So I'm working in my Bubble app and I'm making a contacts page. And I've got to a point where, um, I mean, at the moment I've only got five contacts, but uh, when that number grows, I will probably be looking to add in a search. Um, and this is one way to go about it using Bubble's default search box. Um, so if I go into the editor and look for uh, search, Okay, and this acts a lot like an input field, but uh, with some other bonuses. Um, so I can update the placeholder. And uh, then uh, out of these choices, I want it to be dynamic to be able to search through um, my bubble app uh, and my contacts. So I define the list of options to contacts. And then I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to have it search the name. Um, and this is one of the limitations um, and why there'll be a follow-up video showing another way to approach doing a search because I can only search one field here but in another video um, I'll show how to search more than one field but for now we'll go with name uh, and then uh, I'll leave that one unchecked because uh, I don't want uh, free entry of text into the box um, right so, so that should work and go on to preview So now if I type in Tony, I get, or even the beginnings of Tony, I get uh, Tony. And if I click on it, nothing happens. Um, so let's build a workflow now uh, for if a uh, if I click on Tony, I want to be able to go to Tony's profile because this is a search box in my header and that would make sense as what to do. Um, so uh, I go for uh, when an element's input is changed, and it selects the search box um, because when I when I select uh, one of the um, the data uh, entries that um, I have in contacts, when I select it, it changes the from both perspective, it changes the uh, data in the input. Um, so that's why I've gone with uh, inputs value is changed, and then I can do navigate, and I have a really rough profile page, uh, and then to send the data, to send Tony's data or whichever contact is selected, I go this search box value. Um, and so the value is a data type over typed text, um, which is useful if you want your search box to be able to take uh, a value that has found no results and create a result. That will be in another video. Um, but for now, uh, we just want value because that value is of type contact. So let's give it a refresh. Tony, and now I click on Tony. It's our random photo of Unsplash uh, for a video about profile pictures. But you can see I've gone to a page in the URL. You can see that it is a page of that is profile in my um, bubble editor. And then this is the unique ID uh, for Tony's entry. Um, some flaws in this to point out and reasons why you might want to consider a different approach is if I go back, um, this does not filter this. It doesn't allow me to do that very easily. Um, also, it means, also it, it limits me to only searching um, one uh, search field. Um, and that can um, cause all sorts of problems that should be quite simple. For example, if you have a field of first name and a different field of last name, uh, the default built-in search box here will only let you search one of those fields. Now, a way around that is that when you, your user registers, you have a field called first name, a field called last name, and a field called full name, and you take those details uh, and you combine them together with a space in the middle for that third field. But, uh, but yeah, and then you can choose it here. But uh, it's not perfect because then every time uh, a user updates like their first name or their last name, you have to have uh, either a backend um, trigger, a workflow, or uh, some sort of workflow that you create on the front end to ensure that if they update their last name, the full name also gets updated. So it's not ideal, but those are a few pointers of workarounds. And in a future video, um, I'll be showing how to uh, create a search box that both filters the content here and uh, allows you to search more than one field at a time.